I woke up the next day and had food poisoning. And I remember I was chasing Patrick Mahomes and he kind of hit me. He kind of hit me with like the LA roll. Yeah. And I went, I went to go cut with him to like run with him. And right when I planted my foot, I took a step and I was like, if I turn, if I push off, something's coming out. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Greenlight Pod hosted by the Butter King. And uh, I guess I've been dethroned because the Butter King 5 is joining us today. The Butter King V. The Butter King V. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you get your job stolen by someone younger, more athletic, larger, stronger, and faster than you. I guess that happens in the media world too. Ain't that right, V? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you know, it just happens. It's tough. Just got to hang in gotta, there. <laughs> just got to roll with the punches. <laughs> uh, well, let me gas you up for two seconds. I'm joined by one of my favorite teammates, Vita Vea, a giant motherfucker, um, entering year seven. That's kind of crazy, V. Super Bowl champion, 12th overall pick out of Washington in 2018, which was my first year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when I looked after a young Vita. Also a standout running back in high school, Vita. <laughs> back when you were young and spry and athletic. Yeah, back when, back in the golden days. Back in the golden days. Well, thanks for joining us, man. Welcome back on. I know you've been on Greenlight before. Frequent guest. Yeah, appreciate you guys having me. So what's the latest? I haven't talked to you in a minute. What you been up to? I haven't been up too much. I've been, uh, I just got back to Tampa. Yesterday I've been in Oregon uh, past couple of weeks. Uh, just training out there, but. Shell shock. I just got back from a walk trying to get used to the heat. Hey, good luck, man. <laughs> I don't know if you can get used to it. You never get used to it. How are you feeling? I So I just had Scotty Miller on, was talking to him about uh, what it's like prepping for camp as a wide receiver. Obviously, I was in nose guard as well. What's it like, you know, because I was with you when you were a younger player, like I mentioned. What's it like, uh, you know, entering year seven, which is fucking crazy to think about. How have you kind of changed the way you're prepping for camp later in your career? Um, right now, I think I took a bigger step this year going out, um, actually relocating. Uh, where I was training this off season and heading out to Oregon. I think that was a big thing for me because I was, I think the one thing about Tampa, I love it here. And I think I just got too comfortable being out here. Um, obviously I got my own house here and been here for, like you said, seven years, going on seven years. So I've just gotten a lot really comfortable here. And just, I think I need to uh, change the scenery and, and just kind of grow up and, my own sense and try something new and that's what i did i think it uh i think it uh helped me out a lot my body feels good right now it's the best uh, it's gonna feel all year v the <laughs> best it's gonna feel all year here you too. know that <laughs> definitely so who are you training up with in uh in seattle uh a guy named keith d'amelio uh and dominican sue trains out there with him you gonna get uh, sued on retire I don't know. You, you never know that guy. Seriously. Hey, breaking news here on the Greenlight Podcast. You heard it from, v, from Vita. Sue might unretire. Thanks for giving us that scoop, V. <laughs> Appreciate that, brother. <laughs> you never know. Uh, well, sounds good, man. I'm glad you had a good um, a good summer because, you know, shit's about to get real quick here. When do you guys report? Uh, we report next week on Tuesday. I think it's the 23rd. There you go. Uh getting ready for that uh conditioning test what do you guys got this year you know what's ap think, cooking cooked up for y'all i think it's the same from the past three years cut 30 so 30 yards and back oh yeah see that's that's what i do the thing that drives me crazy i can't remember if we did this your rookie year or not back when we, we did the Dave beep Kenny. test the beep test <laughs> what the, the fuck middle, <laughs> the uh, elementary <laughs> beep test yeah bro we did that like and I remember like that summer, I was like, yeah, my first season in Tampa, I'm going to train out in the heat. So me and Yo Murphy went to Skyway in Tampa at 2 p.m. because that's when our practices were. And I was doing this beep test. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing as a nose guard doing this beep test that we used to do in gym class and that they do for soccer players? 
the funny thing is, like, you could prepare for it all you want. It just gets harder because, like, the GM, all the coaches are are watching you, and yeah. you're like, dude, uh, they're probably not looking at you, but in the back of your head, you're like, they're why they're they're definitely watching me. I got to no, go I, on this. Yeah, and then you walk up and you try to look around to see if the cameras are rolling, if they're recording it. You know, if they're recording it, then you're trying to like hold your breath, trying to make it seem like you're not breathing off. Like you're not fucking dying. Exactly, bro. Oh, man. I can't like that's one thing. The anxiety before camp when my buddy sent me a picture like, dude, I've been retired. I'm, I'm chilling, but I still get anxious this time of year. So I'm like, I got to get ready for camp. Send me a photo of the Eagles training facility, Novacare, with like all the advertisements up in the tents, you know, which yep. means can't. I swear, dude, I just instantly started sweating. I just came from the facility and seeing them setting up the field for the fans and stuff. And then we got an ice box now. Oh, it's like a come uh, up. It's like an AC box where um, they let you go in there in the middle of practice, try to cool down. Yeah, you just spend all day in there. You're just chilling in there. <laughs> yeah. I was. I can't remember. I was telling someone uh, who just signed in Tampa. I was training with him a little bit this off season, and I said, I was like, "Yo, man, you'll see." Every day, guys will walk right out the facility, and you'll see their heads turn right away to find that big ass flag, the giant yep. bucks flag. And if that thing isn't moving, you know you're in for a long day. Yeah, definitely. If that if that flag stuck, is stuck to the pole, it's it's gonna be spicy. Yeah, you just know there's no breeze, and it's no gonna breeze. be ninety five percent humidity, and you're gonna be shotgunning Gatorade beers on the sideline like what Vita does. <laughs> I saw, I saw that video, dude. That was fucking great. I needed that. That, that brought me back to life. Dude, the Gatorade cans, they just hit different. It's they true. Hit different. Off the ice? Yeah. I've never seen those, like, available for retail. Yeah, it's weird. I wonder where the uh, the Bucks get it from. You got to hit up a Gatorade wrap so they can ship me out, like, a couple cases of those just so I can feel like I'm still playing. <laughs> 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 I need that. All right, Via, I want to talk some really specific football stuff with you. Um, obviously, the season hasn't started yet. I live in Tampa, too. I'm a little bit of a Bucks fan, you know? I love Casey Rogers. I love Todd Bowles. I love that defense. Um, I had a really good time playing in that defense in 2019 with you. We had a good room. A little more fun in 2019 than 2018. But I got to tell you the story. I don't know if I've ever told you this. Obviously, I was with the Eagles. We won the Super Bowl. Uh, which was in 2018, and I signed in free agency to the Bucks. I signed a good deal, like a starting nose guard, you know, contract. I'm like, fuck yeah, like a little bit of a backup role in Philly, like finally got my time to shine. And it was like Memorial Weekend when, when the draft was that year. I remember I got on a flight to come up to Minnesota, where I am right now, and I'm like just loosely following along the draft. You know, didn't, didn't buy the Wi-Fi on the plane. I was like, I'm good. I remember I get off the plane, I get service, it's like, yeah, the Bucks drafted this giant nose guard out of Washington, 12th overall. I remember just being like, what the fuck? And watching all your highlights and be like, I'm fucked. Like, I'm not even going to play. Went straight to the airport bar and got a beer. and was just like, just thinking about my life, like a sad sack of shit, drinking a beer at the airport alone because they drafted you. So appreciate that. I, I remember just thinking to myself, well, yeah, cool. I'm going to be there for like fucking get like five snaps a game while they play this rookie. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. You still showed me love, though, my rookie. I remember I got I had a bad practice, and then I think Buck was just like had a field day on me because I was just mess. I had like mental errors. I didn't know the playbook. I was like getting reached, and then <laughs> <laughs> I was I was getting yelled at in meetings. And then next thing you know, you came. I remember you came up to me in the in the locker room. You just like you came up to me and you were like, "Take it with a grain of salt." And I was like, "Appreciate that." No, dude. Well, I'll never forget is like. He, Buck, this is Brenson Buckner. I think he's still with the Jags, his D-line coach in 2018 for us with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's just be honest. We were not that good defensively that year. Our D corner got fired like four games in. Mike Smith, a little bit of a tough year for the boys. We were kind of banged up. I had like a foot injury I was dealing with. You had some with your calf where you missed a lot of camp. Yeah. And our D-line room was kind of miserable. And Buck was like, he had some, you know, like, a lot of older coaches will do, this, especially guys that played, where they like try to break rookies in, you know. Yeah. Especially like I don't know if you felt that way, but as a vet, that's kind of how I was looking at it. Um, where like you're a first round pick, like he wanted to let you know, like you're not going to come in and get it easy. Like he yeah. was definitely hard on you. And I'm sure you've seen that with guys, but like he would yeah. make you go out to practice like an hour early. And I remember <laughs> your ass would come to meetings, taped, spat it up, 
And then right after meetings would break, like usually you get like, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. Because we practice after lunch. We had yes. lunch. So then like I had to eat lunch like fast or in the <laughs> And then I would do the whole practice before practice. You would do lunch. all the individual stuff like but twice. I think, I think, I think ha- having that really like helped me like grow into, I think, the player I am today. At yeah. such a young age in, in the league coming into that, because I feel like I think at least for me, I'm, I don't know about every other uh, first round rookie that comes in, like having a different mindset. It's like I always said, it was like a roller coaster ride. Like high school, you reach the top and you get you go get a scholarship to a D one, then you get there, then you're you're at the bottom again, and then you you reach your way to the top again in college, and then you get drafted. And you come in as a rookie, and you're back at the bottom. You got to so earn think, it again, man. Yeah, you definitely got to earn it again. So I think for me, when I came in, I was just like, dang, I'm a, I am made it to the NFL. Like my mindset was like, I made it. I got, you know, I know how to play football. <laughs> Buck was it's like, easy. surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> at the whole playbook, I think it was, it was different because in college, we were really given uh, the leeway to do what we wanted in college. So yeah. uh, when we came here and then, trying to learn all the plays was was like a learning curve for me i'll never forget like you're going out to practice early i remember like me and will golston who's like another vet like he's like a vet vet now you know what i mean yeah um but i remember looking at you in the meeting room all taped and spat up like rushing your ass out to get out to practice like 45 minutes early i was like i'm not gonna let this dude do this shit alone and so like we got our d-line like a bunch of the a bunch of us went out there and like worked on shit with you like we worked on stuff that we had to work on like my yep. knees, my get off. <laughs> and uh, I feel like that was kind of a little bit of a bonding moment for that room. Because even it's funny, man, like you've been I'm sure you you've kind of experienced this, too. But like sometimes the the years where like you perform the worst as a team, it like almost brings your D line room together, like your individual yeah. group room together. Because like that's all you have. Like everyone's miserable. All you got is the boys in the room, you know, I think that did bring us all together because the, the next year, the only new person they brought in. Because Gerald went to the Panthers. Yep. And then they brought in Sue. So Sue was really the only new person. Sue so and I think, then I that think year, Carl. But I guess Carl was an outside linebacker. No, he was there and with Buck. He was there. He came yeah. in like after camp. Yep. But then I think having that, uh, just going through like the ups and downs with that group, yeah. the core guys in that group, um, just helped us out the next year. Because the next year we got, we finished number one in, in yeah. uh, rush defense. Yeah, and that's obviously a huge emphasis for Casey. Casey Rogers, one of my favorite D-line coaches I've ever had. Ran into him in Tampa a couple weeks ago. Me and Vita were joking about that. Uh, I was out at dinner, you know. It was, it was a fun time. It was fun to see Casey. So caught up with him a little bit. Um, but, yeah, stopping the run was a huge emphasis for that. I know you guys finished, I think, fifth in um, run defense last year, which is very impressive. But, dude, like you said, man, it's so nice to have guys, you know, kind of – like that continuity in the D line room. And I feel like you guys have a lot of guys coming back, right? Like you signed, you re-signed Greg Gaines, who's like yep. one of my fucking favorite dudes ever. You're one of your, your college teammate. Yep. Um, Will is back. And then like, uh, Kalijah Cansey who's a young buck. Like how's, how's he been as a rookie? You kind of feel like what I was going through a little bit when I was, when I was trying to fucking, you know, bring you along a little bit. Is that, is that the role you've undertaken with, uh, Kalijah Cansey? Yeah. That's what I felt like, especially with, uh, so the year before, they drafted Kalijah. We drafted uh, another D tackle. He was the first pick in the second round. Mm-hmm. So it was more like that with him too. Was as that well. Logan Hall? Logan yeah. Hall. Yep. With Logan Hall, but then when Kalijah came in, he was like, it was uh, surprising how much he knew and how fast he got the playbook. So it was yeah more. So surprising. he was actually coached by my uh, defensive line coach at Wisconsin, Charlie Partridge. He had Kalaja um, at Pitt, which was kind of interesting. But sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, V. No, no worries. It was it was cool to see a rookie come in and to take on, especially you know the Bucks playbook and to yeah. take on their playbook and and understand it or and get it down the plays as quick as he did. Yeah. And I think that was cool seeing him as a rookie. So like for me, it made my job easier as a vet to try to help him, guide him throughout the way, just like explaining to him like how the NFL works and like how like to pick up tendencies from like stuff you taught me to pick up tendencies from the O-line and stuff like that yeah. and writing it down because you never know we might play them again next year or exactly they might There's, go to another team 
keeping your ears open and trying to listen to all the calls that the O-line makes, especially if they have young, you know, rookie centers and guards and stuff. They're always talking to each other. Got to love then, the rookie O-lineman. Got to love that because they got They tell them everything that to do. B, B, uh, B, five, four, B, five, four. It's like, okay, cool. They're running. A I remember it was funny. We played the uh, Ravens a few years ago and we were in, I forgot. It was, I think we were in the bear front. Uh, I think it was Bear Saw One. I don't know if you remember that play. Oh, yeah, you probably baby. remember Bear Saw oh, One. Yeah. And I was out there in the whole line. They were all they all came out heavy. Like they were all came out three point stances. I was like, all right, it's a run. Yeah. So I got in my stance in my two gap stance, a head up on a zero. The next thing you know, I hear the the rookie center go, five oh, five oh. Like, oh yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Let me change up the stance real quick. <laughs> change up the stance. <laughs> And it worked out because it was like it's like the game slowed down and I actually got a sack. Right? Hey, hey, well, I have to, I'm gonna find that clip. I'm gonna do a little uh, film review after this breakdown and just gas you up, Vita. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean there is so much that goes into playing like nose guard, playing D line. I feel like a lot of people don't realize it's. Listen, don't get me wrong. Like you can get away being, you know, maybe not the smartest football player as a nose guard, but you're so close to the ball that if you can pick up anything like that pre snap. Like where the center sliding, you know, any idea, even if it's run pass, like if he points at something, like he's probably going to be passed. That's the one thing I love about Casey is that mm -hmm. going on year six with him as my uh, D line coach, it's right. just like picking up new things that he's teaching on and just like yeah. getting a grasp of that because it's like it slows the game down for me. Um, and just going out there, like I remember one game, the COVID year, we played Chicago and then I saw the formation. The motion, receiver motion. I was on the backside. Receiver motioned in. He was like, uh, he motioned into a cut split. And I remember Casey in the meeting, like in the middle of the play. I was, I was lined up. And I remember Casey. You know how Casey is. Casey yeah. was like, when the receiver comes over here, cut split. He said the backside guard is gonna cut you. And I was, in, I was in the backside two eye. And yep. he went. I was like, all right, this cut block is coming. I, I believe it, and they came, and I got TFL. So hey, you're starting to play like a white nose guard, Vita. Shout <laughs> <laughs> uh, to Casey. Yeah, Casey, I love it. And no, but you talk about Casey in that defense a little bit. I love, bro. One of the things that I love about that defense is like you never know what they're gonna ask you to do, especially like you. You're you know 350 pound, massive nose guard. Two, you can two gap. They ask you to blitz a lot, bro. I see you out there on the edge. You're rushing on the edge too, which I love to see. Dropping into coverage. Okay, let's talk about that Dropping real quick. The like they never know. You never really know. Like they're they remember, are remember not afraid London. to do anything with the D line. Remember in London? Remember in London? Ah, <laughs> 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 bro! Oh god, that was so good. So in London, we played uh, the Panthers in London. Shit in 2019, and I had Christian McCaffrey on a wheel route man, and I didn't know. Like I'm ta like Devin White's behind me, giving me like there's like one specific call, and I'm tapping it off, and I like looking back, and I'm like, oh. Fuck. And I just took off. I didn't realize that they didn't have anyone over on the other side. So like it's funny because just... they tell you like they tell you the cloud corner is supposed to be there to help you, and you're over there like you're not even thinking about the cloud corner. You're thinking Dude. about all right, I gotta get to him. Sprint Vita, I was sprinting. I believe that belongs to Mr. Gilmar. I was like, please don't fucking throw this. Please don't <laughs> throw this. Please don't right, throw this. That was, that was so funny watching that. That was so funny. I'm gonna make a highlight, a highlight reel, just Vita Vey dropping into coverage. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to plug that on Butter Breakdowns. Oh, man. But, no, V, this is why I love having you on, man. It's fun to chop it up, talk about old things. I want to talk, like, really specific D-line play because I really feel like people don't appreciate, uh, you know, what we're asked to do as nose guards. I think, you know, in the 90s and the early 2000s, there was such an emphasis on running the ball and stopping the run. Like, you know, Tony Saragusa, like these Vince Wilfork, these old-school nose guards that were having 20 tackles a game, and now it's – so different. So I love, you know, seeing you play. Cause like I said, you're asked to do so many different things. Um, like you, dude, you had six and a half sacks in 2022. You had five and a half last year. You're doing the lawnmower celebrations. You're doing the swim and the crawl celebrations. Like even though you're a nose guard, like you're truly a pass rushing defensive lineman as well. So, I mean, you have to love that, right? That's one of the things I respect about your game, man. It's like, you're, you're a well-rounded defensive lineman, brother. I appreciate that. Like, come on. What's, what's the next, that. uh, what's the next, Butter King V sack celebration that we can look forward to in 2024. You got anything lined up for us? Uh, I got to think of a new one. I'm just still in the works. There is like, mm -hmm. it's funny because, you know, everybody, you always talk about them. And it's funny, like, you see, like, the random, <laughs> the random viral dances that go, 
viral yeah. on Instagram, then you're like, oh, I'm going to do this. Hey, this then... one, bro. You got to do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a TikTok shit. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, this okay. is what I want to know, V. You've been, um, like, you play, like, in that, you know, it is in the NFC South, you play against a lot of the same people over and over again. I have a lot of respect for, I'm trying to think, like, Eric McCoy, that center for the Saints, you know, or, like, when I was in um, Philly, I played against Zach Martin two times a year in Dallas, and, like, he's a great offensive lineman. Who's a who's an offensive lineman, like, hardest guard or center player, a guy that you've lined up against a number of times, you're like, man, I really respect this guy's game. You know you got to bring it that week. I mean, you mentioned uh, Zach Martin. He was always a, um, a battle. I think I always did. Uh, I want to say I always did better uh, versus the run against him. But, like, in the pass rush, it was like he always knew – it was like he was like a mind reader. He knew what move I was going to do, yep. which was uh, like a challenging for me to go in mm-hmm. against him in the past game. Um, it was just like I couldn't figure out a move to like try to beat him. Every time I tried to bull rush in the center was sliding this way, so yep. it didn't really work. And then if I got him one-on-one, he knew like a hump was coming and right. he was sitting on it. So mm-hmm. it was just like all my moves that I had prepared going against him was um, – was definitely he definitely knew was was coming, so that was tricky for me going against that. Um, He's a great player, man. I think I don't know. I want to say Jensen was probably one of the best centers I ever went against. Yeah, I think I think he that was uh, he molded me to become a good player as well because you know we had battles going against him and in, in, in practice every day. Um, man. So we were going back and forth. So I think going against him helped me um, become a better nose guard as well. Yeah. I mean, that's really where you get all your work done. That's how it was with me and Kelsey in Philly. Obviously, me and Jensen in Tampa is the same thing. You know that. But, like, he's a motherfucker to play, man. It's like, he's nasty in practice, too. And sometimes you're like, my guy, it's Thursday game week. (laughs) (laughs) What what messes up? Well, like, well, sometimes he, he like, messes with your head because he'll take a playoff. Yep. And, like, when you least expect it and, like, you – you you like knock him back and then make a tackle. And then the next play, he gives you all he got. And you're yeah. like, oh, no, he's, oh, he's a good player, man. And he just retired. So shout out to Jensen for retiring, man. It's a great career. Uh, I got a couple Jensen. other random questions for you here, Vita. First of all, like, dude, you know, I'm in Minnesota right now. I grew up in Minnesota, big hockey fan. You fucked up your tooth. Why did you get it fixed? You knocked I your tooth to. out during the game, which is the, one of the funniest clips I've ever seen. If you're a hockey guy, you just let that shit roll. Why'd you get it fixed? I couldn't. It, it, the nerve was exposed. <laughs> <laughs> it, chipped, it chipped. It was this tooth. The nerve got exposed. And then, like, after, after, the, after the game, I went in to just drink some water. It was like an ice cold water straight out of the fridge, and it just hit me. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. This is not right. And then I, mean, I, went out to, uh, I went to the dentist the next day. That was a funny story because I was at the team dentist office and i was just sitting there waiting in the waiting room and then steve mcclendon he was a vet that year he 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 called me and he was like i got another dentist um for you he said if you go to him he'll do my teeth for free so i was like all right, <laughs> I was like, all right. I walked out i literally walked out of the team of bobby set this appointment up for me yeah I literally walked out of the dentist's office and just drove straight to the other guy. I didn't even tell the receptionist that I was leaving. I just got in the car and left. You got to hook so up your boy. Like, they were probably <laughs> waiting for me. But that was a funny story because I, I, I drove to the other guy. And it was like it was already too late because I, I left and I was gone for like 10 minutes already. And then next you know, like I called up Steve and I was like, what, send me his address. He sent me his address. It was like an hour away. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, fuck. I was like, it's already too late. I'm already down. I'm already on the freeway. I might as well just go check it out. Went there, did it. They pulled it out, put a uh, cap over it, and just. I actually got to go back because it's uh, uh, it got infected. So the dentist tried to uh, inject something in there to try to make the the nerve shrink. But Damn, I dude. guess I I'm guess to knock did that it. shit out again. <laughs> Might as <laughs> just, well just leave it out. Fuck it. Get a group canal. Just leave it. Oh God. How do you feel about the Washington Huskies joining the illustrious Big Ten? 
I feel like we come to dominate. Oh, get the fuck. That's only you guys are lucky because you don't have the Badgers on the schedule this year. Oh yeah, we would have we would have walked in. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we you don't know what Camp Randall's like, man. You know, Camp yeah. Randall's a great. It's a tough place to play. We got Bama. Wisconsin has Bama coming in in like mid September, and uh, I think we're about to run these old Pac twelve Pac Pac ten teams, man. You guys don't know what's coming. I don't know. I, I think mean, I think we're gonna put up a good fight. Um, I I, I think I don't know. I, I they should have kept the the Pac twelve. Obviously, I'm a Pac twelve guy. Yeah, I don't think there's another conference like the Pac twelve. I see think how you, see how you fare in the Big Ten, brother. I think the Pac twelve was the best conference out there. I think Just a lot because of, a lot of people argue with that. No, I think a lot of people know deep down. Everybody knows, like everybody in the Big Ten were like, "Dang, we should have went to the Pac-12 <laughs> instead of them coming to us." Uh, how do you how do you feel about watching uh, the Huskies in the uh, the championship this year, man? That was fun. That was fun. I was actually um, we were going in the playoffs, so we had like some time off. So I actually got to go to that game, and then um, obviously it didn't come out how we wanted to do, but. Turned out to a good a good trip um, down in Houston and being able to see the dogs, the real U Dub, <laughs> the, the real U Dub in the in the natty, but it's all good. I think it was like a conspiracy came out. They were like, they were like, oh yeah, uh, we gotta let Michigan win. Yeah, that's um, definitely what it was. Conspiracy. That's what that's what I heard. It was like the, I got the script. Yeah, you got the script. Got the script. All right. Well, let me know what the script is for college football next year because now I'm retired. I gotta I gotta do some gambling, man. How was uh, that? <laughs> I'm not doing well. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I make more money playing talk against you in the locker room. Uh, but hey, dude, you guys got fucking Washington University South down in Tampa. You got yeah, we got the UW pipeline over here. Yeah, you got Joe Tryon. You got my boy Greg Gaines, who is literally just a young Bo Allen. Um, yeah. Kate Otten, and then you drafted what? Uh, McMillan, right? McMillan, third round. Yeah. How's what's that, that like walking around the locker room? All these Huskies. It's crazy to see, like. Um, even before, like, Greg, it was funny because me and Greg were roommates in college. Yeah. And then, um, even the Huskies that came through while my time here was crazy to see, like, a bunch of guys from UW that I played with come through here. It's crazy, but, um, it, it is pretty cool to see, like, those guys that still have that relationship, especially with Greg. Yeah. It's funny seeing them around, like, just seeing them, like, dude, you never changed. Yeah, <laughs> the same. It's the same. A guy like Greg Gaines is never gonna change, man. Never gonna change. But uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. I think there's six of us now. Yeah. So that's. that's oh, you that's got another cool. rookie too, right? Uh, Devin Colbin, uh, gotcha. tight end. Yeah, that's and, fun, man. Uh, it's always fun to be with your boys in college. I mean, you guys have some good, some good Huskies in the NFL now, man. You got Penix and and the Falcons, Roma Dunze, Chicago. He's fucking sick. Yeah. Uh, McMillan and, and all sorts of stuff. So, dude, I'm, I mean, I think you guys are gonna get run and run to the fucking Big Ten buzzsaw, but we'll see how that ends up going. I think we're just gonna hit the ground rolling. Coming in, I, I just seen someone sent me like a, a DM. A big Penn State fan sent me a DM. Was like, oh yeah, we're playing you the whiteout game. Oh, yeah. They're lucky. They're lucky they're not coming to UW because our stadium's louder. Dude, I've heard Husky Stadium is sick. You got the lake right in the background. Actually, Steve Belichick um, came on Greenlight Pod with Chris. Shit, in the offseason a couple months ago. And in the, right in the background, just the mountains. Like, you can see Mount Rainier. You can see Lake Washington. Like, dude, it looks beautiful, man. I didn't realize it was loud <laughs> like that, too. But it looks like it looks glorious. Yeah, it is pretty loud. It's, it was, uh, that was always a benefit when we had to run the stadiums. And then there's like a reward. You just get to see the view. <laughs> <of everything. laughs> we used to run the stadiums at Camp Randall and like we would just make, we'd be like, if guys, guys would throw up, it'd be like, you had to throw up off the top. And we would just fucking get up to the top and just spew like right down out of like the street right there. Breeze Terrace. So funny. Uh, but let's talk, let's talk a little bit about this upcoming season, man. 
what's the goal for the season? Like you're a vet now, man. How wild is that? You're you're going into year seven. It's crazy. You ever just think back like, God damn, how did this go by so fast? That's yeah, definitely. I did think about I think about it all the time. It's just like I'm sitting here at year seven, and it's like where the time, where did the time go? And just like walking into the locker room, like obviously there's rookies and they have questions, like, oh, how was it back in the day? And you start telling them stories yeah. and you feel like it was just yesterday. Yeah. Um, uh, telling them the stories. Uh but it was funny because I told Will, I was like, Will, when I came into the league, you were year six. Now you're year twelve. Crazy. You're twelve or thirteen, one of them. And I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, get ready for Will to uh, show up with the shaved head like week or like week <laughs> to a camp that you just know. Like Will would always come in one day, shaved head, mean mugging everybody. You're just like, all right, we're, like I'm not gonna say a ton to you today, brother. But like you, Will, you. Will had a Will had a tradition where like if you missed a sack, he'll come back the next day with his head shaved off. <laughs> yeah. And he so, did it himself because, like, if you sit behind him in meetings, you'll see, like, spots that he is. <laughs> well, he did not care. Oh, such a fu- such a unique guy. But what's the big goal for the season, man? You got anything, like, you got your eyes set on or, uh, you know, like, you know how it is before camp starts. You got to kind of, you know, mentally prepare, get ready for the grind of, of camp and then the season. But, you, you know, you always kind of have one thing you want to work on, one thing you want to try to improve or something – a goal you want to try to achieve over the course of the season. You got anything like that coming up for us in 2024? I think uh, my biggest goal, I think I've had, I, I've had, it's been the same goal the past couple of years, is to try to reach double, double digits in sacks. I nice. think um, that's my biggest goal. I think it's attainable for me. I think I just got to lock it in a little bit more, especially just watching film, like, dang, missing this play or – there's a couple sacks that there's a couple freebies that you miss. Like if I didn't miss that sack or if I just was there quick, a second quicker, um, just trying to hone in on my pass rushing and watching film and stuff like that and studying the playbook to make sure I could be able to achieve that. Um, I think it's right there. I think I just got to take the next couple steps to get there. Yeah, I feel you. All right, so you guys, uh, the Bucks, man, you guys got Baker back. What's it been like watching him kind of come into his own in Tampa? He had a great year. I'm just having Baker around. Um, I remember when he first came in, you know, just being a very down-to-earth type of guy. Yeah. Um, you know, we went – we would go golfing and stuff with him and just being able to hang out with him, stuff like that, just is very dope. But then seeing him on a playing field, we we playing – um, we'll go out there for one series, and next thing you know, the next time we're on the field, it's second quarter already. So yeah. we're like, damn! If this, if if Baker and the offense could keep doing this, we're we're gonna right. be, we're gonna be, you know, cooking with grease. A little but, bit uh, different than 2018 with uh, the Bucks <laughs> with the 30 picks. You go to the sideline, you don't even want to take your helmet off. <laughs> that was that was so funny that that <laughs> year, that year. I think that year. See, that that was 2019. That was that's where, that, that that's, was 2019, yeah. That's where a lot of people still don't give us enough credit for being number one rush defense. Yeah, with having that many um, turnovers in offense. Right. And then us, we what, what was our record like six? If we we won like five games that year. That in 2018, we won five. I'll have. I'll have we won seven games. I think we won seven or eight, yeah, in 2019. But we were number one rushing defense, and we had a bunch of turnovers, and teams would. But, like, to only win seven games and to really think about it, like all NFL games are come down to really – most of them come down to one-score games. So if we're, if we're losing most of them. Teams are running the ball because they're already winning. They're trying to run the clock. And for us to at, attain that – Number one rush defense, I think. Yeah, yeah. Good shit. Good shit. All right, I want to talk real quick about one of my favorite players I've ever played with, uh, Levante David, man. Why doesn't he get more credit? He's unbelievable. I don't know why. He should be getting way more um, credit for the type of player he is and how um, long he's been doing it for Right. at a consistent rate. I think he's going in, what, year 13 or 14? Yeah. And even last year, I was on the sideline. And then, remember Coach Wade? 
yep. strength coach. He yeah. came up to me and he came up to me and he was like, um, what's it called? I subbed out and he came up to me. Levante made a sick play. And then he came up to me. He was like, I just keep waiting for that guy to drop off, but he never does. Oh, he's unbelievable, man. Now, he's I think, like- I don't know. The, the NFL needs to give him more credit. Um, I think, you know, obviously everybody that played with him or on the team or in the Bucks organization knows what he means to the Bucks, And, uh, you know, what he's done here is, uh, is pretty amazing for him to, you know, have his career and still be able to do it at a high level that he's doing this late in his career. Yeah, man, he's a Hall of Famer in my mind. No joke. I will never do anything but gas up Levante David. Unbelievable dude, great player. And, hot, like, it's so nice when you're a, you're a nose guard and you know you have a, a linebacker like that behind you who knows – exactly where you got to be probably knows the play that's coming and then just play so hard. He's so smooth too. And like, yeah. it's just, it's, it's it helps like a, you. It helps you want to be better as a, as a, a D lineman. Like I told him when, when I first came in, I think when Casey and first came in, cause my rookie, we were four, three. And then when mm. Bowles came in with his uh, defense, we were more like a three, four style type of defense. So I just told him, I was like, I'll take two. I'll take the double team as long as you make the play. I was Keep like, I don't clean. care. Like, if you make the play. And I remember countless of times I just feel him just hitting the gap. And I was just like, damn. That's it's like kind of a bitter, <laughs> it's kind of like a bittersweet moment because like you, you feel like you have control over the, uh, over the center of the guard. And you're like, all right, the ball's coming. I'm about to make this tackle. And like, <laughs> yeah. I just feel Levante <laughs> just spread right past me and make yeah. the CFL. I'm like, exactly. I'm celebrating with him, but in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, that was my play. <laughs> dude, exactly, bro. Uh, all right, so, dude, you're like a fucking Super Bowl champ. You played in playoff games. How? What was the atmosphere like uh, when you guys played Detroit? I think it was – I mean, I'm, I am I kind of like the way that team runs. I, I like Dan Campbell. I feel like they were really committed, like, running the ball with duo and with that offensive line. How, what was that atmosphere like? Playoff game in Detroit. It was, nice. Yeah, it was, it was definitely crazy, especially being in the Dome. Yeah. And, like, their fans were, like – packed out and it was like it got super loud in there so it was just like easy for them to carry the momentum Mm -hmm. on their side of the ball so um it was definitely loud and just it was crazy it was just like you're playing and it was like yeah i wish i i wish we were playing in in tampa right now yeah well you guys had a good playoff win in tampa 2020 motherfucking super bowl my guy it's pretty sweet to win in your home stadium you know yeah that was uh that was one for the books. That was that was crazy. You had to do it without me, man. Damn. You're killing me. <laughs> that would have been, that would have been <laughs> fun as hell. You would have been. That was a good year. I mean, I was out I there remember, celebrating with you after. Remember that? <laughs> that offseason, I was like, honorary Super Bowl winner. Let's go. Played for the Bucks 2019. That was, Dude, it was so funny, though, because when we, when we came into Super Bowl week, like you could see Raymond James – from the practice field. So you see them setting up for a Super Bowl. You drive past it to and from going home to work or, or into the facility. So you see it like the process happening. So it's just like extra motivation because you see it all. And then like, it was funny. We, the first day we got the game plan, like our first defensive meeting of, of Wednesday practice, we got the game plan and we are just like, we won already. Like Bowles made up a new defense. And then we we're just like, like I even understood it. I understood the coverage. I was like, this is crazy. Like he made this defense just for us to win. And it was like we went back in the locker room, the office guys. Where I remember Shady, Shady came up to me and was like, What's the what's the game plan? We we're telling them and then he was like, We we already won. He's like, You you don't have to know the game plan. I think what we have is just is we already we already got it locked down. I think we still had, we still were barely hitting our full stride that um, that year as well, and I think it showed in uh, in the Super Bowl because I think we didn't give up a touchdown. Yeah, that was sweet. And then Shaq and those dudes were murdering the Chiefs O line on the edge. It was fun. That watch. was so funny. I think because they had a lot of offensive line out. Yep. And I think that helped our cause as well. But mm-hmm. then it was so funny because we're like we were already winning. And like guys were making up games on like pass rush games in the Super on Bowl. The field. Like Sue, if you look up Sue Sack. Like that wasn't a game plan, um, a game that we ran. So he was just like telling them, Cam Gill, the rookie, he was like, "All right, you're gonna do this before the play. You tell him do this, 
run up the field and I'm gonna come under and then we're gonna do that. And he got the sack and it was I so love funny. That. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that one out, man. That's fucking awesome. Sometimes those are the best games. You feel it, you know, while the bolts are flying and you just know it's gonna work. The only shitty thing I had of the game was I had food poisoning that game. Really? <laughs> so I was just like I was I was hurt all I was hurt from week five. I broke my ankle. And the next thing you know, um Sue like took me under his wing and was like, let me use the chef. And um, his PT guys were like, give me advice and stuff. But I was eating healthy, trying to make sure, like speed up the healing process for my recovery. Cause he, he put the thought process in my head to make it back. He was like, you can make it back in the playoffs and, and, and do that. So that was already set in stone for me in my head. Was, All right. Like it's attainable. I'm going to, I'm going to make it back in the playoffs. It was like almost we knew that we were going to win the Super Bowl that year. So I was eating with a chef all year. He was making me breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. And then next thing you know, the day before the game, we get to the hotel. And it's just like the food they had there, it was just like, it was crazy. They had like, <laughs> I never, you know, like normally, normally when you go to the team hotels, it's like the same. It's the same stuff every week. Same stuff every yeah. week. And then I just walk in there going to, on my way to meetings and I just see, like, damn, they got hell of shit. <laughs> you were crazy. <laughs> I, was like, I was just like, I'm going to just make a play. I'm free. <laughs> At the team hotel, I think Sue's chef brought a salad or something. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not. I was like, I'm not. I was like, I was like weighing my options. I was like, damn, this food looks pretty gas. And I was like, should I eat this or salad? I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to probably have a couple bites of this food they got here for us. And I think it kind of hurt me in the long run because um, I woke up the next day and had food poisoning. And I remember I was chasing Patrick Mahomes and he kind of hit me. He kind of hit me with like the Elway roll. Yeah. And I went, I went to go cut with him to like run with him. And right when I planted my foot, I took a step and I was like, if I turn, if I push off, something's coming out. <laughs> So I just stopped. I just stopped. I went. I just stopped. I was like, all right, I'm going to get shook. I literally ran straight off the field. And I said, Gangsy, I got to go to the bathroom. In the fucking Super Bowl? In the Super Bowl. Middle of the, we're still on the field. We're still on the field. I ran straight off the field. I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to find this fucking play, dude. Oh, God. You're like, uh, it's so like, funny. Jordan. we're like, we're, I couldn't even really celebrate in the locker room because like everybody was in the locker room celebrating. I was on the toilet smoking my cigar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's hey, whatever. Hey, it done. Super Bowl feels amazing. Super Bowl win feels amazing. Whether you're in the locker room or on the toilet, man, that is a fucking great story. I can't believe you haven't told me that before. I love that. It's like your Jordan flu game, man. That was hilarious. That's incredible. Good All time. right, bro. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. It's been too long. Um, you're the best, bro. Can't believe year seven for you. It's been fun watching you develop from a little rookie who had to go out before practice and hone your craft, and now you're the one who's actually pulling up the film on your iPad. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the funniest thing ever. I forgot about this, and Vita was signing off, and I had to bring him back on to tell the story because it was, like, one of the funniest moments pregame I've ever been a part of. And, V, every time I hear this fucking song now, I think of you. Walk us through when you got the aux cord as a DJ before we played Tennessee in 2019. Um, we're going in there. I took the early bus in, so like barely anybody, <laughs> barely anybody was in, the, in the, uh, in the locker room. So I got the iPad, so I was on the ox, but like when everybody, I like had it, it was like already predetermined, like I was going to do this. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I would just hide the iPad and wait for everybody to get in the locker room. And I think it's a, what's it called? Only time by Enya. Only time by Enya. Yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't heard it, look it up and listen to it and it was so funny because everybody's trying to get ready for the game and I'm <laughs> over there on the ox and I put only time by Enya on repeat and everybody's looking everybody's looking on the, for the iPad is like who the fuck is playing this who put this bullshit on no T-Mac the running back coach came out and yelled in the locker room like why the fuck is this song playing before the game and beat us everybody seat. You say right now because you just look over and smile. And I was like, bro. 
it was so funny. And then I was like, they were trying to get me to explain it. And I was like, you never watched the Hitman? Remember the movie Hitman? <laughs> yeah. He's killing everybody. But like, he's listening to that song. And then I, I was, feel like we went out and fucking lost that game. <laughs> we did. We should have won. I heard we, uh, they tried to run like a fake field goal. Yeah. The long snapper, or not the long snapper, the, the, the holder, I think, fumbled. Devin picked it up and ran it back to the touchdown. And then the ball just, just didn't roll our way that game and we ended up losing. Uh, it's because we weren't right pregame, dude, because you shitty DJ. Kill the DJ. <laughs> hey, every time I fucking hear that song, I think of you. That was an incredible moment, man. That was so funny. That was that was good time. I might have to bring it back this year. Bring that shit back. Have it play on third down. <laughs> we still we still listen to Roy Jones. Roy Jones Jr. Dude, you remember how weak the atmosphere was in Ray J? This was before Tom Brady came down. You guys won a Super Bowl. We're, yeah. It's like third down, and we're all trying to get hype at Ray J on the field. And it was like the weakest music. It was like Hall & Oates playing. And we're like, can we get something get fucking going? And so it, I had him put on Roy Jones Jr. Can't be touched on third down. Kind of a banger, dude. Kind Come of on. a banger. I mean, it's not only know. time by Enya. Really, really get the people going. I might, I might have to bring that up and just let them know to third down, bring that out, bring that out. Only time. I might throw everybody off, but who can say, dude? That's a fucking hilarious. That's so. Cue funny. the music. Cue it up. All right, V. That's a, again. This is a Minnesota goodbye, man. We had you on. We had you off. Appreciate <laughs> you coming on, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs>